Hi everyone, now we're going to take our information from our trial balance and complete our three financial statements. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to page 33 in your textbook because that does give you examples of what the financial statements should look like until we get to chapter 6. When we get to chapter 6 after the midterm, the financial statements are going to change a little bit. So just to give you a heads up there, so we're going to start with the income statement. Let's change that up there so you guys don't get confused. So we're just going to do it exactly like it's shown in the book. We're going to have our revenues. In this case, it is appraisal fees. And we're going to have our expenses. We have wages, expense. And what might help you out the easiest is just go back to your trial balance, copy, and paste. You do not have to indent like the book shows unless you want to. I am not going to count off for not indenting. So either way is fine. So now we're going to take our information from our appraisal fees, the amount we have. So it's going to go over here. We have, I'm going to minimize this for a minute to make it easier. So our appraisal fees are $1,990. And then we're going to list our expenses. Again, copying and pasting is perfectly fine with me. So then we're going to show our total expenses. And it's just like it shows us in the book. So we're going to add our total expenses. I'm going to have the computer do it to save time. And then we're going to find out our net income. So to figure that, we are going to take our 1,990 and subtract 1,892. So we only made $98 this month. So that is all we have earned. So now we're going to take that amount and go over to our statement of owner's equity. And so again, we're going to follow the format in the book. So we're going to go beneath, for this problem, it's going to be Benito Mendez. Capital and for whatever period this is, let's just go January first. And we're going to have investments during January. Total investment. Net income plus withdrawals for January. Our increase in capital. And then Benito Mendez, January 31st. And so they're going to start at zero because he didn't have anything at the beginning of the period. We invested. So for this one, you're going to have to go back. So we invested $5,000. So we invested $5,000. Oops, 5000 so our total investment at that point was $5,000. Our net income, which we're going to get from the income statement, is $98. I'm going to make that a little easier for you to see. Less withdrawals. So we're going to go to the trial balance. He withdrew $50. So that is the amount we're going to enter in here.
our increase in capital. To find that amount, we are going to take our $98, subtract $50. So we have an increase in capital of $48. And our total capital is going to be $5,048. Okay, and then the last financial statement we have to do is the balance sheet. Again, this is one that would be great for copying and pasting. Just make sure you don't have a typo, make sure you don't miss anything. So let's change it to Mendez appraisals. Then we have our assets. We're going to have our liabilities. So I'm going to go back to the trial balance and I'm going to copy our asset account. Center these. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the trial balance and copy the amounts. Okay, now we're going to do our liabilities. The only liability we have on this problem is accounts payable. So I'm going to put that in. List the amount listed on the trial balance. And that is $1,800. And then we're going to have our owner's equity. And so we're going to have Benito Mendez Capital. And like with 13-3, our capital amount is going to come off our statement of owner's equity. So that's the amount that we're going to use. So now we need to total. Do our assets match? Our liability. So we're checking to make sure each side of the equation matches. And I'm just going to abbreviate for this point to make sure that we balance. Okay, and if you look, our total assets do equal our total liabilities. So we have finally finished with 4-9. I know it does take a while, but let's go on to 4-11. This is one that students really seem to struggle with. So let me go back to the chapter. The end of the chapter, and let's go to 4-11 B. What we're given is we're getting information and we have to correct our books. So we made a mistake on our books and so now we have to fix it. So they give us part of the information we need. Our job is to figure out the rest. Okay, we were trying to record the purchase of equipment for $400. What we actually did was record a purchase on supplies for $400. And it shows we should have purchased it on account and we purchased it to supplies. So what we have to do is we have to do the opposite. So we have to credit our cash account to get that increase back up. I promise you your ones for homework are actually cheaper. I mean, sorry, easier to do thinking about the amounts. And so, but we need to have a debit to equipment because that is what we actually purchased. So, and that's going to be for the same amount. So it's just showing that we're putting the cash back into the account because we didn't actually spend it on account and we're making the correct debit to equipment. So now we got to credit supplies because that's not we that's not what we purchased. We need to take those supplies that we recorded back out. And then we need to record how it should have been 
purchased should have been to accounts payable. So we're going to correct that error. So that is your first part of the transaction. So that's transaction number one. This one is a lot easier. The second one is more like what you're going to have to do for homework. So on the second one, it was supposed to be the payment for, let's see, it was supposed to be the payment for advertising. So what we should have done is it should have gone to advertising expense. That's where it should have gone. And we didn't do that. And it's the same amount. And so the cash was correct. We paid in cash. So now we just need to debit repair, I'm sorry, credit repair expense. So we can take that amount back out. So that's all there is to doing number two. Let's see, I don't know if there's a three, if there's a third one. And there is. This one is a lot like the last one you're going to have to do for homework for this week. It was supposed to be a $600 payment to a supplier on account. So it should have been a credit of $600 to cash. So what we need to do is we're going to have to debit accounts payable because that's where it should have gone for the $600 because that's what we should have recorded to begin with. We're going to credit prepaid insurance for the $400 that we debited because we didn't actually purchase insurance. And then we're going to have to debit cash. Because if you look right here, let me zoom in there for you. If you look, our equation is out of balance. We're $200 off. So we need to show the rest of the $200 to make sure our debit equals our credit. So this last part is almost exactly like what you're going to have to do for your homework assignment for the last one. The second one is similar to the first two problems that you have to do on 4-11 for your homework. And for this first one, you're not going to see anything like this at this point in time, but it does give you a sense of what is coming up. Again, if you have any questions on any of these, please do let me know. If you need to set up a conference in Canvas, let me know and we'll try to work something around your schedule as much as possible. And I hope you have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions.